Hi guys and welcome back to Jetbox TV. Uh, thanks for being here. I hope you've liked and I hope you've subscribed because it does make me feel good. In this video we are going to take a look at uh, what happened whilst doing pre-flight departure checks on a trip that I recently took from Liverpool to Ostend. There's going to be a full video later on on the actual trip but during those checks and on the apron my engine stopped. And that's particularly troubling because I didn't know why it happened and it also seemed to resolve itself uh, after I'd switched the engine off, uh, switched all the avionics off, all the electronics off, uh, rebooted the engine as it were and the issue seems to go away. Uh, it's troubling because uh, I don't know why it had happened, I don't know why it resolved itself. Um, my trip was going to be a 20 minute, include a 20 minute trip over water and I was also coming back the same day. So there was going to be a second trip over a 20 minute stretch of water. Anyway, let's take a look what happens. And then uh, after the first section of video, we're going to go back over it, take a look, and uh, we will work out exactly what happened. Flight plan we've got loaded, no SID yet. So park brakes are on, fuel selector is on the fullest tank. Now it is. Next is our full winch. Total to 2,000. That's not very good. Boost pump fail. Great. So as you can see there, I am doing my pre-flight checks and I do a fuel tank change and 13 seconds later you see that the engine stops. And the checklist says change fuel to the fullest tank. So by reference to the digital fuel gauge, I can see that the left tank is slightly higher than the right tank. And so I proceed to change the fuel selector switch from the right hand tank to the left hand tank. So our fuel selector is on the fullest tank. Now it is. Then here an oral warning tone and the cans begin to illuminate. Shortly after that, the engine stops and you see a look of bewilderment on my face whilst I try and work out what's actually happening. So let's have a look at that in close up. I'll zoom in to the fuel selector switch. And this selector switch is a three position horizontal lever with full off fuel on the left hand side. Middle position is left hand fuel tank. Full right position is the right hand fuel tank. And you can clearly see by zooming in on the fuel tank selector switch that I'm already in the middle position. And therefore I'm already on the fullest tank, which is in the left hand position. And therefore when I select the left hand fuel tank, I'm actually selecting the off position. And this is confirmed by zooming in to the fuel selector switch after the engine has stopped. And I can identify that I have actually turned the fuel off. Now this three lever selection switch is quite a common situation and um, it's notorious for potentially being switched off not only in flight but uh, on the ground as I did. Um, and <laughs> there is a gate so to go from the left hand position to the off position you actually have to select the lever in a downwards motion and then fully left again and it is designed to ensure that you don't do exactly what I did. But you can clearly see that it is very easily to not even be distracted, but just to select the wrong hand, the wrong fuel selector and um, almost come into a situation of confirmation bias where because I've selected the lever for left, I'm convinced that I've moved it onto the left hand fuel tank when in fact I've actually switched it off. Now the upshot in one respect is that uh, it takes 13 seconds uh, or thereabouts for the fuel to actually stop the engine and one would like to think that uh, if that were to happen in flight that I would notice that, quickly check the fuel selection lever and return it to either the middle or the full right position and uh, feed fuel back to the engine again. Um, however, it is an I learned about flying from that moment and I will be certain to ensure that whilst airborne I do not select 
the full left hand position and therefore turn the fuel off. So that was my uh, that was my situation. I didn't identify that until a week to ten days after the flight. It was troubling me. I did a lot of research. I looked at the fuel system. I identified that there was a mechanical fuel pump. That uh, as soon as the uh, propeller was turning, that the fuel pump would be working. There's two electric fuel pumps. There's one in the left hand tank. There's one in the right hand tank. And there's an emergency fuel um, boost as well. And it, it was really troubling me as to why the engine would have stopped but i've now clearly identified that by retracing the video zooming into the selector switch based on a hunch that i had and identifying that in fact it was my own error so a definite learning process there a good learning curve and thankfully one that uh, had a positive outcome um, so thanks for watching uh, i hope you've learned from this and i hope anybody with a similar fuel selector switch can also learn from this and uh, see you again soon the video of the flights from liverpool to ostend will be coming shortly and i hope you enjoy that